Hello and welcome to today's talk about the bisulfide conversion or we talk about bisulfide sequencing as well. Bisulfide sequencing is a method for the detection of DNA methylation. But before we talk about the bisulfide conversion, I would like to introduce with epigenetics. Here we have two mice and we can already see they have a different phenotype. So the first mouse here is dark gray and the other one is brighter in color. But what if I tell you that these mice have the same and identical DNA sequence? We know that genes are responsible for phenotypes. But how is a variation in phenotype, for example, possible if I tell you that these mice have the exact same identical DNA sequence? This is possible with epigenetics. The mice have the same DNA sequence, but different epigenetic patterns. In genetics we talk about genes and a mutation can alter the DNA sequence and this can possibly lead to changes in the phenotype. However, in epigenetics we have no alteration in the DNA sequence itself. There is not a single nucleotide changed here. However, we have a methylation of a cytosine for example. And methylation or different other epigenetic changes such as histone modifications can also change the phenotype. DNA methylation is one of the most abundant phenomenons if we talk about epigenetics. In most animals DNA methylation occurs on the cytosine. So cytosines can be methylated. Here we show a gene sequence. In green we have the promoter region. We see that in the promoter region we have DNA methylation. So cytosines in this region are methylated. This usually leads to the inactivation of genes. In this scenario genes are not transcribed anymore. But how can we detect these methylation patterns? Now we speak about bisulfide conversion. So DNA methylation involves the cytosines. Some cytosines are methylated and some are not. With bisulfide conversion the methylated cytosines will stay the same, they will stay methylated. However, the cytosines which are unmethylated will be replaced by uracil. Here again we have the cytosine and we have a methylated cytosine. With bisulfide conversion the cytosine will change to uracil in the DNA and the methylated cytosine is untouched by bisulfide. So after bisulfide conversion we generate a DNA where all cytosines which are unmethylated are replaced by uracil. After certain rounds of PCR the U will be replaced by T. So basically we can say that all unmethylated cytosines will get replaced by thymine in the end. When we compare the DNA sequence now we can easily figure out where the methylated cytosine occurs. So all cytosines which are replaced by thymine are considered unmethylated. However in the regions where the cytosine stays cytosine after bisulfide conversion we know there we have DNA methylation. This knowledge can be very helpful when we analyze genomes in disease. Bisulfide sequencing can help to figure out potentially silenced tumor suppressor genes which when silenced are candidates for tumor promotion. So with bisulfide sequencing we can exactly determine DNA methylation patterns. And with that I thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was helpful and see you in the next one. Bye.